All right, let's talk about the red-hot Pittsburgh Steelers all of a sudden. Like, it's crazy what's happened. I mean, this team was dead. We were talking about them. We were eulogizing Mike Tomlin. He's going to be fired. The Steelers are going to have to blow it all up. But you can never count out the Pittsburgh Steelers. And after that devastating Colts loss, they have, you know, come back and blown out the Bengals and then beat, I still think, a good Seahawks team here to give themselves a situation where they realistically need a little bit of help if they're going to make the playoffs. A win doesn't guarantee them to get in. Uh, but still, if they win and either Buffalo or Jacksonville loses, that would be enough for them to get in. So really interesting stuff with them. But again, to me, the most exciting thing about the Steelers isn't just the fact that they have a chance to get in. It's the fact that they're playing like a playoff team for like probably the first time all season, right? Earlier, they were kind of stealing a bunch of games maybe we didn't feel like they deserved. Now, they're just straight up beating teams, and it's really with the emergence of Mason Rudolph, who all of a sudden... He's doing good things. Some things are just stuff like this, where it's zone coverage. You have a receiver trying to get into a gap in coverage. Okay, simple enough. Rudolph is going to take the snap right here. He looks up, and there's a little bit of a window for him to try and make this throw. It's not like wide open or anything, but again, if you time this well and throw an accurate pass, you can make this work. And as you see, that's exactly what Rudolph does. I mean, it's just a simple, solid play. And these are the types of things that you kind of want your offense to be able to do. And quite frankly, with Kenny Pickett and with uh, Mitchell Trubisky, when these plays were open, they weren't really getting hit. So I do think that Rudolph just being able to be a game manager type quarterback, that gives uh, Pittsburgh a big advantage. I really do think it does. Also, I got to talk about Jalen Warren, who I feel like every Steelers game I'm watching, and I'm just like, Jalen Warren just seems to make like two or three like great plays a game, it feels like. Uh, even in this game, while his overall stats weren't great, eight carries for 27 uh, yards, that's, you know, not typically fantastic, although he did have another 30 yards uh, receiving. But here you see the blocking concept on your screen. And again, it seems like Warren will do this once or twice a game. Watch what's going to happen. You're going to see Rudolph take the snap. He's going to hand the ball off to Jalen Warren, and there is a hole for the Steelers to, uh, you know, st that the Steelers have opened up. And it feels like when Warren can get some open space, that's where he can really do some damage. There is that block right there as a Pittsburgh player is moving up to the next level to block that Seattle defender, meaning that the closest unblocked player here currently for Pittsburgh is that guy. That's the guy Pittsburgh has to worry about. So, okay, can Warren, you know, use his speed and use his, uh, you know, uh, kind of shiftiness to get past him? Well, yes, watch him accelerate very quickly. He moves around very quickly and is able to get into the end zone right there. You know, uh, an average running back is going to gain some yards on that play. I don't know if an average running back is scoring on that play. And it does feel like he has that ability, which is really, you know, impactful, especially when, you know, I think Najee Harris brings a lot to the running game as well, just in a different way. And Harris had a good game in his own right. So that all that stuff, you know, really impactful. But going over here, I mean, the, you know, I still think at the end of the day, this offense runs with George Pickens. George Pickens is the offense. George Pickens is the star. He is the guy that the, you know, the team runs through. And as long as you keep getting him the ball, which Rudolph is making a conscious effort to do, that's what's made this offense look good these past two weeks. It's been because of Pickens. You, you do wonder where this offense is without Pickens, right? I mean, Rudolph had 290 yards in this game, but only 95 of those yards were to other players. George Pickens had 195 of those 290 yards. Allen Robinson was the second highest receiver with 36 yards. And then Jalen Warren, who I brought up, he was third on the list with 30 yards. A play like this, this is a big play in the game. Third down and seven, uh, you're up, you know, Four points, but up four points is not a comfortable lead in the fourth quarter, especially against Seattle, who can, you know, at times move the ball down the field. Watch as Rudolph takes the snap. You saw Pickens' route. That's where Rudolph wants to throw. Rudolph a bit under pressure. Maybe doesn't uh, get his feet planted exactly how he would want, but Pickens is wide open here. As I said, though, Rudolph not able to get his feet exactly the way he wants. He's not going to put this one perfectly on the money, but this is what a true number one receiver can do, right? Give you a big window, and even if you slightly miss the window, look at how Pickens is able to still adjust. He makes that outstretched catch. Really good stuff there by George Pickens. He even stared into the camera afterwards, so good awareness of knowing where the cameras are, too. Uh, you know, the, the showman, George Pickens, but really good stuff to, again, pull off that kind of thing, and when you have that aspect of your game offensively, it, it just makes things so much easier because th there are going to be moments on third and sevens where you need a receiver to win on the outside. And the fact that they have that guy and the fact that they got him in round two is pretty incredible. 
But also just stuff like this, where this is going to be a zone coverage play for the Seattle Seahawks. It's a cover three zone, and you know you see the concept on the screen, and kind of in many ways, there's a corner on that side of the field, and he can only really cover one of those two players, right? So if you're Rudolph, just throw it to you know who's uncovered. Watch as when it begins, you see that Rudolph looks up, and it's actually going to be Pickens who's about to get into a, a bit of separation here. Ideally, a Seattle player would have read this and picked up. Pickens on this play, but since that didn't happen, watch as Rudolph is going to, again, kind of off balance, but still puts an accurate throw to Pickens, who's able to, you know, do good stuff in open space. He did fumble the football at the end, but it fell out of bounds, luckily, so got to make sure you protect the football, but still good stuff from Pittsburgh. So because of, you know, being able to pull off these types of things and being able to get these explosives, that's a huge part of the offense too, right? Like, you know, I feel like earlier in the year, uh, you know, especially with the Matt Canada stuff, it was a lot of like, okay, let's try to set up third and manageable. Well, you know, sometimes try to just get a first down early. Sometimes try to just get 15, 20 yards uh, and get down the field that way. Because then you don't have to worry about a holding penalty being devastating because you only, you know, you're running, running half the plays you need to. And also stuff like this, just this, like, this is like the first time stuff like this was happening with any consistency, which might actually say more about the uh, Seattle defense than anything potentially. But again, it's a good schematic play where you have Pickens running a deep route, kind of a clear out route. He gets a lot of attention, so you got to use that to your advantage. You're then going to have another receiver run a route more over the middle on this play. This will be Deontay Johnson. Watch as when Rudolph takes the snap, he's going to look over the middle. He eventually fires over the middle, and Johnson is, I mean, there's no one even close to him at this point, which is a not great situation here for the Seattle Seahawks. Also, I think I have to do a correction for something earlier in the video. Uh, I think Google gave credit to uh, some, some of Johnson's yards to Pickens. So Pickens actually didn't quite have as a uh, high percentage of the yards that I uh, said. It looks like the, you know, the ESPN numbers and the Google numbers are very different. So I'm um, not exactly sure what's going on there. But either way, Pickens obviously means a lot to the team. And so does, George, uh, and so does uh, Deontay Johnson, who, again, you see is wide open. Also, when Rudolph makes the throw to Johnson, he's able to do some good work in, uh, you know, in open space right there. So really good stuff there from Johnson. And again, it's set up due to the George Pickens uh, stuff. So, you know, good stuff across the board here for Pittsburgh. But yeah, uh, as a whole, I mean, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's it's good stuff. And it, honestly, it would be such a shame at this point if Pittsburgh finally gets their offense together, they win the final three games of the season, and it's not enough to get into the postseason. Because again, the way they get in is uh, if they win, then what they need is a either a Bills loss or a Jaguars loss. They get one of those, which Bills play the Dolphins. That's no easy win. And the Jaguars play the Titans, which is a relatively easy win. But the you know Jaguars are really injured right now. So, you know, is Lawrence even going to play? There is that definite potential for Pittsburgh. There is a way where Pittsburgh can get in with a loss as well due to kind of tiebreakers. They would need a Denver win, even though Denver's already out, that that's what they would need. And then they would need a Jacksonville loss on top of it. But to be honest, with I feel like Denver's kind of thrown in the towel and the Raiders are still, they feel like a team that still fights. So I think I would not bank on losing, essentially. I think that odds are much higher if you can get a win. So, uh, but should be interesting either way. But yeah, those are my thoughts on all of this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.